In these clips and images, we see the 20mm Orlikin Auto Cannons in action. They are all using the Mark 14 gun sight for tracking and sighting their aerial targets. These gyroscopic stabilized computing gun sights accounted for the correct target lead required. They were devastating. They increased the gun's projectile strike rate by over 50% over conventional iron ring sights. They were mounted directly to the 20mm guns and used in conjunction with the Mark 51 director to remote control the 40mm, 1.1 inch, 3 inch, and 5 inch guns. The intent of this video is to review the Mark 14 gun sight's features, how to use it, operational tips, how it was coupled with the Mark 51 director, and its combat effectiveness. This video is a follow-on to these channels' videos covering the 20mm Orlikin, 40mm Bofors, and gun ring sight use. This image shows a battery of Orlikin 20mm guns. All guns have their targets sighted by the Mark 14 gun sight. Another view of a 20mm single gun using the Mark 14 gun sight. This page from an April 1945 Navy 20mm gun document describes a gun sight. It is a simple to use gyroscopic computing gun sight. The only inputs the gun teams need to account for is the plane's range. It provides a quick firing solution, which is needed for stopping low, fast-flying aircraft. The computer makes some assumptions in the firing solution and ignores some factors which have a small influence on the projectile's trajectory. It does not have an optical magnification. It can, working with the Mark 51 Director, be used with these larger caliber anti-aircraft weapon systems. It is mounted directly to the 20mm gun and to the single 40mm power-driven gun. This table lists the 15 Mark 14 gun sight versions from a 1946 Mark 14 gun sight manual. The columns are the modification numbers from 1 to 15, the gun it controlled, maximum range, and notes. Each type of gun sight unit was unique as it was designed for the specific projectile ballistics of the gun it was assigned to. This illustration from a 1943 Mark 14 gun sight document shows a 20mm gun sight and its power unit. The gun sight is mounted directly to the 20mm gun. The power unit is bolted to the splinter shield and the ship's power is supplied by this cable. To use the gun sight it needs to be turned on by the power unit switch. The power unit provides both compressed air and electrical power to the gun sight. The gun sight's reticle brightness knob is located here. The brightness is adjusted to give the gunner his best illuminated view like in these reticle images. The illuminated reticle has two bulbs for redundancy. If bulb 1 is burned out, rotate the knob to bulb 2. The reticle image will either be crosshairs or late model gun sights used in illuminated 60mm ring as shown in this image. A late model Mark 14 gun sight. The elevation mirror is located here. The illuminated reticle will be projected on this mirror. Next, the gunner will need to inspect the air hoses to make sure there's no kinks or binds. Incoming air is this line, and outgoing air is this line. The power cable is here. The unit's air pressure gauge is located here. The air pressure gauge should read 4.5 inches of mercury or 2.2 psi. The closed looped air source is needed to spin the gun's gyroscopes and the power to operate the electrical components of the gun sight, like its illuminated reticle and heater. The gun sight's range handle and dial are located here. The range gauge is graduated into 400 yard increment detents, in this case from 400 to 2000 yards. The maximum effective range of the 20mm gun is 1,200 yards if the target is sighted by an iron ring sight and or tracers, and 1,700 yards if the target is sighted by the Mark 14 gun sight from a 1942 20mm gun manual. Other guns will have different maximum ranges. This dial is controlled by the gun crew range setter. The range setter stands to the right of the gun sight and operates the range pointer, like seen in this image. He estimates the target distance from the gun. Only he and the gunner are looking at the target. He also makes corrections based on the tracer stream strikes or misses relative to the target. When first tracking a target, always start with the dial set to 400 yards. Keep the range set to 400 yards until the reticle is aimed at the target's center of mass, like in this view. The sight reticle will realign faster this way. Once the reticle has stabilized, the range setter crewman will set the correct range. If the plane is attacking down the barrel, like in this view, then set the range to 800 yards and open fire at an actual range at around 1,000 yards. No lead correction is needed for this type of attack. The gunner can minimize glare by deploying the sky filter. The unit's light filter is located here. It's polarized and can be swung over the gun's front window. The newer Mark 14 models have integrated the filter into the gun sight case. The gunner moves this lever to deploy the filter. The internal filter's articulation gearing is shown here. 
The gun sights require a 30-minute warm-up prior to use. This duration is required to allow the gyroscope's damping fluid to reach an equilibrium temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This implies the guns need to be in standby mode if combat is expected. Additional significant features of the gun sight are listed on this page. The gun sight is well suited for ship-based gunnery. It's gyroscopically stabilized. The gyroscopes compensate for the ship's roll, yaw, pitching, and its forward acceleration. It does all the calculations needed in estimating the gun's lead angle, accounting for the projectile's time of flight. This image shows the gunner tracking the target, the range setter operating the range dial and watching the target, and the trunnion operator operating the trunnion while watching the gunner's knees. The gun sight's crosshairs are stabilized on the target here. The computing gun sight has calculated the lead angle of the barrel here. The 20mm projectiles will follow this path during its time of flight and strike the target here. Movement of the sight mirrors in deflection and elevation will show the correct lead. This image shows components of the gun sight. The elevation gyro is located here, and train gyro here. Train mirror and elevation mirror. The gyroscopes are fluid dampened to minimize reticle vibrations. Smooth action of the gunner is the most critical part of the gun use. This image shows proper target tracking. Keep the reticle's crosshairs on the target center of mass. Track the target for a couple of seconds before open firing. Firing short bursts is the most accurate. The gun sight accounts for bullet drop due to gravity or super elevation. The gun sight does not account for the ballistic effects of the wind, drift, parallax, or roller path error. These influences on the projectile's trajectory are considered small. If needed, they can be accounted for by the spotter knobs. The spotter knobs are located here and are set to zero prior to gun use. They're generally not used. The ship's general quarter alert is sounded when an air threat is approaching. We will assume some of the enemy planes have slipped past the ship's cap. This information is relayed by the ship's pilot house, as described on this page from a March 1945 CIC document. All anti-aircraft batteries are informed of the incoming threat. The threat's position is relayed when they are 5 to 10 miles beyond the gun's range. Tracking and firing of the large caliber 5-inch proximity fuse gun starts at their maximum range. The 40mm and 20mm guns can point their guns in the direction of the VT shells and time bursts in anticipation of the attack direction. This will save time. While the gunner is responsible for tracking the target and firing the gun, projectile strikes depend upon the range setter. They both need to form an effective team. The range setter will need to both estimate the range and make spot corrections. He should observe the tracer stream relative to the target and adjust the range dial as follows. If the tracers are striking the target, OK range. Missing behind the target, increase range. Missing ahead of the target, decrease range. By the end of 1942, Mark 14 gun sights were incorporated on the 20mm mounts, replacing iron sights, as described on this page from a 1945 U.S. Navy anti-aircraft summary document. The Mark 14 gun sights and Mark 51 anti-aircraft directors were used with the 40mm bofers. The purpose of a director is to remote control the ship's guns, as defined on this page from a 1957 naval gunnery document. This image shows features of the Mark 51 director from a 1945 naval gunnery document. The Mark 14 gun sight is here, backup ring sight, and the gun sight's power unit. One of the guide handles is here with trigger. The range setter controls this range dial. Another view of the Mark 51 director from the pointer station. The Mark 14 gun sight's rear window and the unit's guide handles. The range knob. This image shows the location of a quad 40mm Bofors Mark 51 Director. The Mark 51 Director's pointer and range setter remote controlling this 40mm quad mount. Another Mark 51 Director's pointer and range setter remote controlling this 40mm quad mount. Use of these directors and gun sights did require changes in tactics when the ship is attacked by kamikaze aircraft, as discussed on this page from an April 1945 Naval Anti-Aircraft Action Summary document. The twin mount 40mm guns Mark 51 director's initial range should be reduced from 3,200 yards to 2,400 yards. The range setter should be reduced by 400 yard increments as the plane approaches the ship quickly and smoothly. The 20mm gun's Mark 14 gun sights range should be set to 1,200 yards while the whole 60-round magazine is expended. The range should then be set to 400 yards during the 5-second magazine changeover. The 20mm guns are the last gun types to open fire. The sky will be filled with tracers and self-destruct projectile bursts. This makes target sighting difficult. This tactic change, though, will make 20mm gunnery more simple and reliable, which will lead to more hits. 
This image shows the location of anti-aircraft guns on the battleship Nevada as of December 1941 and in March 1945. They went from 8 50 caliber machine guns to 20 20 mm gun mounts and 8 40 mm quad gun mounts. A study shows 20 mm guns fitted with the Mark 14 gun sight had 50% more hits than tracer sighted targets. It is estimated 80% of kamikaze planes were shot down by the Mark 14 sighted 40 and 20 mm guns, as discussed on this page from a 1970 Center for Naval Analysis document on defensive measures taken during kamikaze attacks. This value is backed up by this table from a 1945 anti-aircraft study report. During this kamikaze attack study period, the Mark 14 sighted 40 and 20 mm guns accounted for 77% of planes shot down. If you have found this Mark 14 gun sight deep dive review interesting and informative, please consider liking, commenting, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.